Morning. Namo Amida Butsu. Hello. Namo Amida Butsu. How are you? Nice to see you again. Yes. And you. I see you've, you've broken from your t shirt uh, tradition. <laughs> yes. Where, <laughs> uh, rather than a t shirt, a solid t shirt. <laughs> I thought it was sort of that, you know, that sort of YouTube video channel kind of, you know. All uh, right. Okay, I always wear a t-shirt, solid color, bro, you know, t-shirt. I thought, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, there's no philosophy behind it. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, good, to, good to see you. So, yes. Yeah, great to see you too. Sorry uh, about uh, uh, this, our original schedule not working out, but glad we were able to. Yeah, no, no. Thank you so much for your flexibility. I really, really appreciate it. Um, because it's just busy, <laughs> busy time now. My my in-laws have moved here with us. So yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Time it's great, but it's yeah, just getting them, you know, getting them all organized and yeah. 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 So That's nice. What uh what question of mine did we did you prepare for this week? I, I have Mm. I have something that I found that Master Renyo said okay. that I think might settle the question about listening deeply and okay. what you're supposed to do. And, it, and his answer in, in perfect, you know, sim simplicity uh, and, and perfect Japanese way, like sums up <laughs> everything that we've been talking about for like, Three or four sessions in like <laughs> two or three sessions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, um, and I hope I can remember it right. But I can maybe find it if if. Uh... I, I I was gonna try to find it and then um, read it, but I didn't have time before I. <laughs> this busy busy anyway. Uh, <laughs> no problem. I was listening to things related. I was listening to a video related to it this morning, along with other videos about the, the, the you know, Mita Dharma tradition mm -hmm. things anyway. But, um, uh, okay, so basically he was responding to a Zen master. Mm. Ikkyu or something like, Ikkyo or Ikkyu? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, 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 Ikkyu. <laughs> He's quite famous. Uh, yes. In Japan, yeah. yeah. And he, he's kind of a folk. He's kind of a folk hero. There's a lot of stories about his antics. Uh, and, awesome, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A rock star of the of the uh, Zen world. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Very a non nonconformist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Punk rocker of the. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, anyway, although all of Zen was kind of punk, punk rock a bit, a bit rebellious at and, that time. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so coming back to the subject, um, so he said to, I don't know if he said it directly to Master Enyo or mm. if Master Enyo heard him say this, but he said something like, Amida Buddha is without mercy because he only, um, he only saves those who say his name. Something right, along, yes. Something along the line. And then Master Renyo said, um, um, something along the lines of, the moon shines everywhere, but a, yeah. covered, a covered bowl cannot reflect its light. Something along that line. And then he went on, and then he, and then, so there's that. And then there's a passage of his somewhere where he said, either in a letter or something, he says, um, you know, in order to receive the gift of, you know, Shinjin, mm. you have to, um, you're meant to listen intently with your one's whole being. Yes. And that the great compassion of Amida is in hearing something like, I can't remember. See, I tear, mm -hmm. my memory is terrible. Unless I no. actually have it in front of me, I, you know, so yeah. if you remember the exact passage, I would appreciate you. <laughs> saying it that yeah. that is that is the passage in fact um 
I actually, it's funny, what amazing timing. I wanted to talk about Rainier Shonin's um, sayings or some of the things he said about listening too, because I thought it would relate to your question, but you've actually already brought up this, this, <laughs> this passage. Um, and it's exactly like you said, uh, he says, uh, well, like he said to EQ, his reply to EQ was, the moon doesn't discriminate in its shining. It shines on everyone equally, right? But a covered, a covered bowl can't reflect the, the water. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that, that's and that part, I, I, that part of the, of how the gift is given, mm. I, through our talks, I finally sort of have gotten, I was, before our talks, I was kind of part halfway there <laughs> with that. Yeah. But after, our, after our, you know, four or five talks, whatever it's been, I'm there with that part of it, you know, that it's mm. always, it's just, it's always, it was actually not, he is constantly giving it because it's his light power bow, you know, but it was already done. It was already given, you know, a Samkhya Nayutas of, <laughs> of yeah. billions of billions and billions of years ago you know of kalpas billions and billions of kalpas ago whatever you know um mm. that he actually has been giving it since then he's been the gift has already been yeah. being been for like <laughs> countless innumerable incalculable eras of time yeah. um uh so i get that and it's not like he's doling it out or it's not like he's right this, from some and giving it to others it's just yeah it is. it's here it's just constant it's you know and uh i get i get that part the this part though it just seems like he summed up everything we've been <laughs> talking about yeah like, can you can you read that do you have that in front of you the other the actual passage that i yeah sure i do let's say it. Let me um, go off screen just for a second. Okay, no worries. And um... yeah, I just um, it just made uh, it just made it all make sense and encapsulated it, uh, you know, in just you know a couple of sentences, two or three sentences, whatever it is. Um, how to approach, you know, how how you receive it, you know, how you um, yeah. Exactly, and um, actually, that that passage. I think you're covering your mic again. Just to. Oh, sorry about that. Let me see if this will help. Actually, okay. How's that? That's yeah. It's better. Yeah. Um, Kobai Sensei actually quotes that passage in uh, Understanding Jodo Shinshu. And uh, actually, that that translation is quite a good one. So let me uh, see if I can bring it up very quickly. But yeah, what you said while I'm looking for this um, about uh, if we if we listen from the bottom, like listen intently from the bottom of our mind, then uh, we will receive. Shinjing because of the the uh, the power of the Buddha's compassion. So that's an important part of what he's saying is what you said. It's it's the compassion. It's the great compassion that is uh, what the hearing is. It's the power. It's like the working of Amida's compassion is is working on us through our listening to the Dharma, right? Yeah. yeah so either, that is, go ahead. It's like he's even given us a way to receive it. <laughs> so not only has he given the gift, he's given us a way to receive it. <laughs> Do you know? Yes. It seems like he's given us a way to, you know, yeah. And um, Bend our arms is, to receive the gift or, you know, put the laundry out to dry or open the curtains. He's given us a way 
to do that through hearing, through listening. Exactly. exactly. Now, the part, okay, anyway, did you find it? Did I did. It? And um, this uh, is a great passage. I actually wanted to talk about this passage um, because uh, Rin Yoshonin uses a metaphor that I think is very helpful. And I think will be helpful for you. It certainly was helpful for me. And he, it's actually like a, an old saying. So I don't know if it was originally a Chinese Buddhist um, verse. Um, the source, I'm not sure about the source, but um, this is uh, what he, what Rinya said. So it's called Stone and Water. It's from the collection of Rinya Shonin's sayings. And uh, it goes, stone is hard and water is soft. There's nothing harder than stone and there's nothing softer than water. And yet water can wear away the hardest stone. So if one has plumbed the mind, if one has gotten to the bottom of the mind, the enlightenment of Bodhi is certain. That's the old saying the old verse and then Rinyo Shonin commented on that um, if through uh, even if you don't have you know Shinjin yet if you listen intently from the bottom of your mind to the Buddha Dharma um, you will end in faith through the the compassion the great compassion or the compassionate working of the Dharma. So I think this is the um, the uh, passage that uh, you found. Mm. And of course, there's different ways of translating it in, in English. But the, the point that I think is really good here is the water wearing away, flowing over stone. I think even this is an old Taoist saying, I believe. I was right? going to say, it's, I was going to say that <laughs> There's a Taoist, uh, you know, yeah, there's yeah. a Taoist saying, uh, a similar, a similar Taoist kind of saying about that. I think it's just, you know, it's just, it might even just be general Chinese cultural sort of yeah that, you know, was claimed by, yeah. by Taoists. I think it's a, yeah, I yeah. think it's probably a, a common motif in Chinese yeah. culture and spirituality, probably. Um, but the metaphor is interesting because there's nothing harder than stone, you know, and that kind of represents like the, the obdurate, un, unbending, unchanging. It's like, you know, no matter how much we listen, it seems like nothing is you know, <laughs> going to change. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's nothing... Yeah, and there's nothing softer than water, metaphorically speaking. I mean, water is, you know, very, it's a fluid, you know, you can't really grasp it even. It's very, you know, it's not hard at all. And you yet, you know, yeah. and yet water flowing over a stone, you know, in a river or somewhere in a creek bed will eventually it will wear away even the hardest stone. And then the, the verse goes on to say, so, you know, it's, it's a, more of a verse coming from a perspective of like the self-power school of Buddhism. So, you know, you, you need to plumb the mind and then you'll find in, the enlightenment of Bodhi will come eventually, right? But Rinyo Shonin sort of reinterprets that to mean this is like the process of listening to the Dharma. Like you said, uh, intensive listening, listening intently. I, I actually, I kind of want to, um, to uh, the Japanese, the original Japanese, this is a great, a great case where uh, the original Japanese is quite a bit better than the, the English translation, I have to admit. Um, Yeah, okay, here it is. Um, so I have uh, the Japanese here. 
And so, itarite kataki wa ishi nari, itarite ya yawaraka naru wa mizu nari, mizu yoku ishi yo tsugatsu, ugatsu. Shingen moshi teshi na ba bodai no kakudo nani goto ka sho sezaran. So basically, there's nothing harder than stone and there's nothing softer than water. And yet, when water uh, runs over the stone, it will wear away the hardest stone. And then the, the uh, path to the enlightenment of Bodhi, of you know, awakening, is, uh, is like this. And then uh, the reason I wanted to point out the original Japanese is because Rinyo Shonin actually uses the word chomon or deep listening here. And he says, uh, chomon o kokoro ni ire mosaba. So if you put your heart into listening deeply is kind of what he's saying. Like if you listen from the bottom of your mind, you know, or of, from the bottom of your kind of like listening from the center of your being kind of. So it's like, a, it's not just, you know, listening to the meaning. It's like really just listening. Um, then ojihi ni te e soro aida shin o ubeki nari. So you'll receive shinjin, you'll receive faith through the compassion, through the working of compassion in accordance with the Buddha's compassionate, you know, will basically, right? Because the Buddha's intention is to save all beings, right? So like with the, the um, uh, what Rinyo said about the moon shining everywhere, it's not like there's something that's being withheld you know, the Buddha isn't holding back something. <laughs> it's, it's being, you know, it's being constantly freely given, right? And then this is, the last bit is really important. He says, Tadabuto wa chomo ni kiwamaru koto narito unnun. So this basically means uh, the Buddha Dharma begins and ends with listening, chomo. And uh, the Japanese is actually chomo ni ki kiwamaru. And kiwamaru means like the, the absolute limit, like the ultimate. So the Buddha Dharma, it's kind of hard to translate this in English, but basically the Buddha Dharma, like the end and the beginning of the Buddha Dharma is listening, hearing is what he's saying basically. In other words, like hearing is, is all of the Buddha Dharma, essentially. It's all, it's, so basically it's all of the teachings, all of the practices are already in that. Is that kind yeah, of, it's, you, you don't need to do anything else. Yeah, Just, yeah. And is it's, kind of it, part it of begins that? and ends in hearing. Similar, right? similar to like the Nambutsu that is, contains everything. Contains yeah. All the all practices, all the eighty four thousand practices, all the eighty four thousand teachings. Yeah. All, you know, is that in a similar way? Is that what it's saying that the listening? Yeah, he's basically or, saying that when it comes to the Buddha, Buddha's teaching, Buddha Dharma, the most, the central point, the central, the most important thing is listening. And uh, I wanted to, to mention this too, if you think about it, every sutra, every Buddha sutra, whether it's a Mahayana sutra or a, you know, Theravada sutra, Pali sutra, sutra written in Sanskrit or Chinese, what, what do all the sutras begin with? Uh, uh, thus have I heard. Is that what you mean? No, right. Thus Yes. Have heard. So it's evidence that, you know, some I you know witnesses, and that's um is that Ananda saying that or Sharaputra? Ananda? It's Ananda. Yeah, it's Ananda. No. Traditionally, well, according to tradition, Ananda recited 
um, at the first council following the Buddha's uh, great nirvana. Mm -hmm. um, it was Ananda who basically recited the entire canon of sutras. And then of course, you know, centuries later, Mahayana sutras were added to that canon and so forth. And exactly how that occurred is not entirely clear to, you know, scholars. But every sutra, no matter where it comes from, you know, every canonical Buddha sutra begins with, thus have I heard. So it begins with hearing. And the, uh, you're right, it, according to tradition, that's, that's Ananda, basically, speaking, you know. Uh, and there's even, you know, sutras where the Buddha specifically entrusts the sutra to Ananda. And I think the larger sutra, or possibly the meditation sutra, is, is also one of those. Um, but then, so every sutra starts with, thus have I heard. And there's a lot more we could say about this, because even Zindo Daishi Shantao. And then there's a place. So there's the... A sort of witness and right. then there's the place in the yes. you know, Buddha well the, the the speaker of it <laughs> is mentioned so the Buddha Shakyamuni Buddha is mentioned yeah. and where he was he was in right. such, such a place yeah and then yeah. the event and then on. it usually lists who was with him who the audience who, was. Who, was who the audience was yes yes, yes. yeah and then the Buddha begins to to preach the the sutra in question, you know the sutra that is is the and sometimes uh, something happens, isn't there? Well, after yes, the, yes. Before the questions asked, there might be something that happened, or yes, you know. Anyway, yeah. So, so. Yeah, and in that, so, in, the case, in the case of the one of the one or two of the pure land sutras, there was no there was no question asked. It was just well, it wasn't right. A, one of them he just gave without a question being asked and one of them yeah. was asked but it wasn't it wasn't a specific thing asked it was like it was the larger sutra right where Shara, was it Sharaputra or was it Ananda it was Ananda sorry. it was uh, Ananda Ananda witnessed what you know and perceived the in you know inconceivably yeah. beautiful countenance and you know sign that was em, you know kind of emanating from Chakyamuni Buddha, and then asked about that, you know, why is that happening? Um, in, not a specific question about the Dharma or asking for the Dharma, just saying, what's going on here? <laughs> this is yeah, yeah. Like, amazing. Um, and I've never seen this before, or such a thing before. What, you yeah. know, anyway, so there's, anyway, those, those elements, yeah, of the, in the yeah. beginning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and since you mentioned, I think uh, it's important to note that for, for Shinran, uh, what makes the larger sutra the, <clears throat> the ultimate sutra, the ultimate teaching? Um, he doesn't give, you know, like a, an analysis of, well, here's all these other sutras and they all fit in this way. He doesn't give like a lengthy discourse on the history of, you know, and, and the, the Tendai school has the sutras listed such and such. And, and, you know, he doesn't give like this lengthy, you know, theory about how, why the, the larger sutra is the ultimate sutra. Instead, what he does is he quotes those passages where uh, Ananda sees the Buddha's face, you know, shining with light and sees that the Buddha is serene and his, uh, you know, his, his face is uh, peaceful and joyful. And he sees that the Buddha's, you know, emitting this, this aura of light. And then he asks, you know, like you said, what's, what's going on? <laughs> and that, that is for Shinran the you know the proof that the larger sutra is the the buddha's you know the true teaching the purpose of which the shakyamuni appeared in the world right so i think that's very interesting you know he doesn't give us a uh, 
you know, a academic <laughs> theory of why this sutra is the ultimate. He says it's because, you know, Shakyamuni's appearance was so amazing at that moment that it prompted Ananda to ask, you know, what, what is, why I've never seen you what look is like happening? this. <laughs> exactly in a very reverent way yeah and um so but so every sutra mm. starts with in chinese nyoze or thus thus have i heard so it starts with hearing but then when we go to uh let me uh just open up so in the three Pure Land Sutras, first the larger sutra, um, and every pretty much every sutra is is like this, right? But um, for us, we'll we'll just use the uh, the three Pure Land Sutras. So at the end of the larger sutra, it says. Um, Uh, when, when the Buddha finished delivering this sutra, Maitreya Bodhisattva and Bodhisattvas from the lands in the Ten Directions, together with Elder Ananda, other great Travakas and all those in the assembly, without exception, uh, rejoiced at the Buddha's discourse. So that's the larger sutra. And now let's look at the end of the, the meditation sutra. And uh, the Meditation Sutra uh, says, okay, um, when the Buddha had spoken thus, Venerable Mahamadgalyayana, Venerable Ananda, Videhi, and all the others greatly rejoiced to hear the Buddha's discourse. And then the Buddha returns to Vulture Peak, right? And uh, there Ananda fully explained to the assembly what had happened. Innumerable humans, devas, nagas, yakshas, and all other beings greatly rejoiced to hear the Buddha's teaching. And having worshiped the world honored one, they departed. And then finally, let's look at the, let's hear what the smaller sutra says. When the Buddha had delivered this sutra, Shariputra and all the monks, together with beings of the whole world, including devas, humans, and asharas, rejoiced at what they had heard and reverently accepted it. Having worshipped him, they departed. So what, what does the endings of those three sutras all have in common? <laughs> rejoiced in what they heard. Yeah, yeah, it's, they rejoiced at what they had heard. So just like Rinyo Shonin says, the Buddha Dharma begins and ends in he with hearing. And uh, sure enough, in the sutras themselves, it begins with, thus have I heard. And then it ends with the audience Rejoice. rejoicing at what, what they had it, heard. Starts with heard and ends with heard. Yeah, it starts with hearing and ends with hearing. So, you know, hearing is the the ultimate, the the key, you know, to uh, the Buddha Dharma. So, yeah, like you said, I mean, I think that passage pretty much summarizes everything we've been discussing for the past four, yeah, yeah. four weeks. <laughs> Just like two or three lines, whatever, whatever it is. It's, yeah. Uh, you know, and... I think with the, the listening intently with one's whole being or um, mm. um, you know, that pretty much is, you know, says what it says. I, the way I li listen is sometimes I listen, literally listen to it on videos or I copy texts and put mm. it, you know, a copy text and put it into a, text to voice applications so I can listen to it while I read it or just listen to it while I'm doing other things. Um, and, and sometimes when I'm watching a video, 
you know, of, that's giving the Dharma, I put the captions on, although sometimes they're not exact, not completely helpful <laughs> on YouTube. Some of the, uh, yeah, the audio captions <laughs> are <laughs> auto captioning can be very interesting sometimes, but anyway, um, and sometimes I just, I'm just listening while I'm doing other things, you know, literally, you know, li listening, you know, with, um, and sometimes read it. So there's different ways to do it. And sometimes when I'm listening, I'm going, okay, well, I'm trying to figure out okay, what's it actually saying. Wait, let me back that mm -hmm. up. Listen to that again. What, what, what did, what was actually taught there? You know, so there's that way that I listen. And there's sometimes I just listen and don't think about it. I just let yeah. myself hear it um, and not worry too much about if I get everything that's being said or if I've heard every, if I've gotten distracted mm -hmm. or, you know, sometimes I, you know, I don't I listen that way. And, I'll do, and also other times I will, sometimes I will listen at night when in, in my sleep, I will put something on like a playlist mm -hmm of, you know, good teaching orthodox, you know, mm. Shinshu, you know, videos or recordings that, so it just, in my sleep, subconsciously, I will, mm. you know, yeah. um, so I listen in different ways. Um, um, and that's, I don't know, that's, that's the best way I think I can accomplish listening intently. Um, it's hard, and uh, and I'll read, but sometimes it's hard for me to read for long periods of time. Yeah. So that's why I listen, literally listen to the Dharma a lot. Um, um, and I always think about when I'm listening, when I think when I think about how the Dharma masters mm. delivered the, the teachings to people, most of the people they probably were teaching were not able to read anyway so they were literally hearing right. it from someone. they were literally so it kind of makes me feel like well if it was good enough for them <laughs> to, to do it that way um i can do it but i also do try to read uh you know when i when i have it when i have the time and when i'm able i should redo the actual reading more than i do i think i need to be more disciplined about that part of it and actually, you know, just sit down and read it. I, I do at least once a day, I do that. Um, as well as once, you know, at least, at least it's usually three or four times a day that I'm listening at different points of the mm -hmm. day, literally listen to the Dharma and, you know, two or three times looking something up and reading it, you know, that I have a yeah. thought about or a question about or something I heard and what I was listening to or so. Yeah. Um, so in that sense, I, it's part of my, it's a natural part of my life, a natural discipline of my life. But like I said, I could probably discipline myself to listen for, or to, to read, to literally read for longer as part of my deep listening. And then also these conversations are part of my deep listening, asking the questions and talking mm. about my dad. But um, is that, if you do that, all of that to the best of your ability, is that kind of what's meant by listening intently? Is that <laughs> yeah i i mean i think, I, think that that's, is, I mean and listening intently is just okay that's what it's telling you you're trying to listen as intently as you can within your ability obviously we each have our karmic limitations so i have to mm. you know try to concentrate as much as i can to listen within my yeah. um and with my whole being within my limitations um mm. Um, and that whole, the whole being part of it. That's why I was saying the different ways that I listen. It seems it'll get into, it'll get, get in there different ways, subconsciously. Yeah. Consciously. Do you see what I mean? So that's, yeah. the, that's all those different ways that I listen is part of listening with my whole being. Like, so it gets in different. Mm. Do you see, do you see what I mean? That's yeah. Yeah. But just, it's pretty straightforward. Listen deeply. It's listen intent, listen intently with your whole being. It's kind of, there's not too many ways you can misinterpret that, really. <laughs> it's right, right. And then strange. the important part is, you know, because it's the working of great compassion. That's, yeah. that's the crucial 
element. It's, it's not just that we are doing all this work to listen. It's that yes, because the Dharma is great compassion, it's working on us, right? So that's yeah. the- It's the, doing the work. Yeah. yeah. Doing the work. And it's enabling me to listen intently with my whole being. <laughs> Yeah. Anita, Anita's enabling me to do that. Yeah. It's not me like with some great, you know, force of will yeah. and great resolute uh, heart mind. Uh, yeah. You know. <laughs> well, it's like uh, like to go it, back it, to EQ. It's, it's Amita Buddha is helping me, is making it possible for me to listen intently and with my whole being. Is that mm. right? Is that kind yeah, of? Yeah. Yeah. I think. The important thing is that you don't focus too much on, you know, the I, right? <laughs> yes. I, I am, I am listening. I am. Yeah. It's, yeah. So the I want to, I want to bring up. Intent. The listening is intended. Is <laughs> the listening is intent? You know. Yeah. The listening yeah. is intently doing. <laughs> yeah. The 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 listening is with your whole being, you know. Exactly. The whole being is listening. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I want to bring up intently. the whole another... being is listening intently. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, sorry. I want to bring up another saying uh, of Rinyo Shoni. Before, before we go on, I just wanted to say one of the things. Yeah, yeah. The other saying that, that I think you're saying that, that Master Rinyo re made reference you or used as the analogy mm. about the, the stone in the water. And it's mm. slowly over time. Yeah, yeah. I can look back and see since, you know, Amit is working in that way in my life since, well, since that first time I heard the, you know, read that tricycle mm -hmm. magazine plant, the seed was planted. So it was true. The water was starting to work in this, in this existence anyway, at least that was the first obvious start of when the work, the work yeah. was happening already before that. But that first reading that article where I can see it, I can say, okay. That's when I, I can see evidence. I per, first time I can look back and see evidence of, you mm. know, and then, you know, since about whatever it was 2005 ish, you know, mid mid noughties, when I had that mm -hmm. experience of was listening to that thing about rebirth, you know, mm. got the paper, the guy, the guy was trying to deliver on rebirth and, you know, went down on my knees and down on my forehead, you know, you know, crying out to Amita. Um, since then, even though I feel like I haven't gotten anywhere, slowly I can see how my my thinking about it all has has changed mm. a lot, but really slowly. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And then maybe punctuated here and there, like with those aha moments or those you know, yeah. not any special states of mind, but just you know where you rap more suddenly you rapidly get a big chunk of it sinks in insight um, Vita gets it into you you know um mm. but anyway i can see even though in the moment i think am i getting anywhere with this it slowly over time that amita's light has slowly worn down the stone mm. <laughs> to penetrate you know and you yeah know, here and here you know whatever you know metaphorically or not metaphoric but you know and, and, and analogously i should say yeah yeah, well, I think it's a really helpful analogy or metaphor because um, it points to, you know, like I think at one point maybe, you know, you and I, well, maybe you and probably and certainly I expected like this sudden all or nothing kind of, you know, ah, now I've got Shinjin and, Sorry. you know, it's like. <laughs> um lightning zen yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> and what this metaphor i think helps with is you know what i mentioned before which is that it's really more of a process you know it's as yeah. we listen it's like that water running over that rock you might not even be able to see like it happening but like when you says if you listen you know, in t from from the bottom of your mind, eventually you will receive 
you know, faith, Shinjin, because of the, the Buddha's, you know, the power of the Buddha's compassion. So, you know, thinking of it not as like a, an all or nothing, you know, I've got to get it all together. And, you know, um, you know it's not like a, uh, uh, like in Christianity, you know, where uh, people talk about, you know, how uh, uh, I, uh, well, like in some churches, they would have, you know, like the altar call and, you know, people would go down and, you know, I gave my life to Jesus, and, you know, like, <laughs> right? Yep. So, um, very, um, I am very, I, yeah. I, I'm very familiar with that, yes. Yeah. It's not, it's not like, like that. that. It's, no. it's a and natural it process, right? Isn't it great that we don't have to seek those special, we're not, yeah. we're not really see. you know, we don't need to worry about these special states of mind or that we're going to no. special spiritual experiences or like we don't need yeah. to worry about any of that, you know, um, no, or seek, no. or look for that in this, yeah. in this path, in this yeah uh, exactly so you know keeping in mind like i think it's a great analogy for you know thinking of it as a natural process and then it's not you know uh like the the moonlight like what Rinya said about the moonlight always shining right it's it's always being freely given it's always this mind that amida fulfilled which is the mind of compassion that seeks to save all beings and by all beings, that means you and me, <laughs> right? Yeah. And more specifically, me. <laughs> me. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, me. That mind, <laughs> that, you know, light that, that Amida fulfilled is constantly being, you know, sh shown and directed throughout the every, all of existence, right? Yeah. 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 So. Exactly. Oh, and that's another thing that came up in this reading I was doing was that the naturalness, the natural mm. arising of faith, the natural arising of Shinjin at some point through the process of listening, it naturally yeah. arises. Like, you know, kind of like the naturally, the sun naturally yeah. arises stuff. <laughs> yeah. But to, to dry, or the sun naturally shines in and lights up the room if you open the curtains and warms up the room if you open the curtains or yeah, etc right naturally this is a natural function of the sun so it's kind of similar with this that natural arising yes. of faith natural arising of shinjin if you if you know anyway if that prop process is happening so. yeah and that's what amida's light does right like <laughs> amida's light shines on us and wakes us up you know it's it 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 produces shinjin in us the, through the well specifically shinran shonin says through the the name you know namo amida butsu the name because yeah. he, hearing the name of course is very important and then the light and shinran shonin says that the the name and the light is like our our father and mother you know <laughs> yeah. it's the analogy that he uses so yeah. and and i do want to say too like so what you mentioned about the way you listen, I mean, it's different for everybody, right? So it's everyone's, you know, uh, way of listening or path of listening is going to look, you know, slightly different for every person, right? Um, but uh, I think if you if you find a, a way that really works for you, then that's great. Like, I, that's what you should, you know, pursue. Hmm. And then yeah. um, so go ahead. I yeah, did want to, next yeah, yeah, I just wanted to mention another thing that Rinyo Shonin uh, said. As someone came to Rinyo Shonin and complained, you know, whenever I listen to the Dharma, it's like a basket. I'm putting a basket in the water. But then as soon as I'm not listening anymore, it's like I take the basket up and, and all the water runs out. <laughs> like a sieve, you know. <laughs> what did he what did he say to that did he what did yeah did, so did he, what what did master and you say to that 
person. So Masarino's reply was, throw your basket in the water. And leave it. <laughs> Just uh, immerse your, <laughs> immerse your <laughs> basket in the water. <laughs> So, you know, just immerse, immerse yourself in the Dharma, right? Yeah, that makes, that makes huge amounts and leave it there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do. We keep, keep pulling it out. Well, you know what? I got to think about this. Let me look, let me, I've got to yeah. check my, make sure it's, you know, I don't know. Exactly. There must be something wrong with the basket because it's, it's not holding it. Anyway, anyway, never mind. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah, no, that makes sense. Just immerse yourself. Leave the basket in the water. Yeah. So actually, I was uh, looking through the uh, book of Rinya Shining Sayings, and I was specifically looking for passages that relate to hearing and listening. And I realized that there's so many of them. It's like this book is like a, a manual for hearing deeply <laughs> it really is i mean there's so much that um Rinyo says about the topic so do you have more that uh um well let me see here i do have a. Uh, oh where was it Uh, uh, there was another, um, uh, yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, basically Rinyo Shonin said, um, when, when there are people who would attend, you know, Dharma gatherings and they would, you know, have, a uh, discussions, um, Rin Yoshonin always would tell people who were just kind of sitting there quietly to speak up. He'd say, say what's on your mind. And he would say, whatever it is, like whatever you're thinking, just put it out there, you know, because you, uh, you can't resolve your, your, prob your questions and your problems if you just kind of, you know, keep them bottled up, right? <laughs> like, I think what you tried to do where you, you mentioned yeah. that for a year you were just sort of exactly. kind of ignoring exactly like saying you know i'm just not going no, to it's address just, it's this just funky mind that's just i don't need to I'm not gonna I'm yeah gonna, right and, and and just ignore it and let it you know and then and then but yeah and then we yeah exactly it doesn't doesn't turn out well if you do that um yeah. doesn't go well um yeah um yeah, no, I definitely need to. You know, I'm gonna. That's what I'm doing with these, with the, you know, with these sessions. I'm trying to be as ruthless with it as I can. <laughs> that's why <laughs> I asked you that barrage of questions right from the beginning on on Messenger. You know, I was just like, I asked a few, and then suddenly, you know, I just, I was like a keyboard warrior of <laughs> barrage of questions. Yeah, I was really like when i was really urgent because those were all the those are the questions that have stayed with me and were there or have arisen since but have really strong you know um yeah strong 